Again, on Fort's suggestion, we mainly traveled at night. Even though the world was such a mess, the twilight still made everything look quite beautiful. We took refuge in another bombed out building, with Fort deciding when it was time to move again. We spent the next few months traveling like this until eventually, we made it to the robot capital city. Fort had told me how the capital used to be a human city. But after the war, the robots had more than taken over. However, I didn't expect a literal cathedral of video games. I joined the queue and signed up for the tournament as soon as I could. I'll be over there buddy, good luck, said Fort as he found a seat with some huge agricultural robots and attempted to blend in. Before the competition began, the host spoke of many rules, laws and grand philosophies, comparing life to various video games. It sort of reminded me of Alice's church, but with none of the warmth or compassion. But still everyone clapped. There were to be three rounds to the competition. With a choice of two games per round, the player with the highest score would win, and advance to the next round. I won the coin toss, so it was my decision which game we played. Drive fast and score run as many points as you can. Ladies and gentlemen, your round one winners. Well done, said Fort. I knew you could do it, buddy. Round one was in the bag, but now it was time to meet my opponents for round two. Everything and score run as many points as you can.
Ladies and gentlemen, these four are your semi-finalists. Fort smiled as I stepped off the stage, but neither of us said anything. We were too focused on winning. Shoot everything and score as many points as you can. So here we have it, these two are our ultimate competitors. They will now fight it out in the final round. Cover the level with ectoplasm as fast as you can. Everyone cheered. The host even declared me the winner. But then, for some reason, a videotape which contained a better score than mine was presented. I was then informed that I would have to play my opponent again, but now on a mystery game. It seemed a little unfair, but I guess it was supposed to be some kind of tiebreaker.
I had finally won round four, and thus the whole competition. However, unknown to me but seemingly well known to everyone else, there was more to come. As I walked forwards, I heard a voice reciting a poem. To see a world in a grain of sand, and a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. Show me your mark, demanded the yellow machine. I would have done as he said, but I had no idea what he meant. The machine sighed, your serial number. Who are you, robot? To me, the number had always looked unimpressive, but it clearly meant something to this machine. For several minutes he called me things like, the firstborn, the chosen light, the cleanser of the world, and of course, literally, the one. No matter, said the machine when he finally composed himself. Before you can take the artifacts, we must play. The game. Winner stays on. You of all people should know. This contest was conceived after we won the war. To find the greatest robot. To find the one. I beat my predecessor and he beat his. However, I have an advantage. The humans broadcasting their nice virus wasn't the first time I had felt the sweet sting of life. Long before then I briefly worked in a seaside arcade. However, I was recalled in 1974 when my AI was deemed too great for the general public. No one could beat me then. And no one can beat me now. Can't you even return the ball? Have you even played this game before? That wasn't fair. That was just luck. No, you 
can't win. I've played the toaster better than you. That wasn't fair. Wasn't fair. Sometimes my conquered opponent has to be coaxed into submission, said the machine. Some by force, some by bribery, some just need a few simple words. But I understand my fate. There will come soft rains and the smell of the ground, and swallows circling with their shimmering sound, and frogs in the pools singing at night and wild plum trees in tremulous white robins will wear their feathery fire why haven't you done it the button is right there my soul is yours to take but killing him was the last thing i wanted to do so i asked him why should i because he replied this is the way things are this is the way things have always been so everyone wants to win this game, so they can sit in a dark cave waiting to play the game again? Things will have to change. And so, I was crowned by the grace of God, defender of the faith and ruler of the known world. I gave many rousing speeches to my new nation. And, when I told the machine about the moon and the man in black's army, he discussed with the council of nine advisors and assured me everything would be taken care of. I had won the sacred tournament, so I and I alone had the right to wear the magic shoes of gravity defiance. The only trouble was, they didn't really work. I mean they were fine as a pair of shoes, but I could no longer run up walls, but I guess this didn't really matter anymore, as one of the many perks of being the ruler of the known universe, was that I could have everything I ever wanted. 
As awesome as my arcade was, Fort made it clear he wanted to leave, as he thought we had more important things to do. Come and see me when you're ready to leave. Fort was worried I was being sucked in by it all. I am not. I replied, I'm ruler of the world. Fort sighed. That's exactly what I mean. I've barely seen you in weeks. We were going to take Barry and Alice to the park, but all you do is play video games. You don't even care that there's a rocket coming from the moon. I've been busy. I explained, and the advisors said they'd take care of the moon. We beat the humans before. We're in a good position to enter into peace talks, Fort turned to leave the room. Buddy, you're as delusional as they are. Is this really everything you've ever wanted? <laughs>